the legend of the Bermuda Triangle. It's one of the few mysteries we still can't solve. Let's rewind back about 600 years. The story begins with an Italian man. He wanted to sail across the ocean to reach Asia, a continent rich with spices, silk, minerals, you know, that kind of stuff. Getting there by land would take ridiculously long, so he figured, hey, uh, why not to build some sturdy ships, uh, gather a couple of sailors, and set off to Asia? What could go wrong? And that man was Christopher Columbus, by the way. In 1492, with a little help from Spain's royal family, he embarked on his journey. Everything was going well. I mean, apart from totally going the wrong way. But as he got to the end of his voyage, he noticed something very strange. He didn't know it at the time, but he was sailing through the infamous Bermuda Triangle. The BT, the point of no return, the scary place between Bermuda, Puerto Rico, and Florida. There are loads of stories of ships, boats, and planes disappearing into this mysterious realm. Some were found years later, and some disappeared off the face of the earth, lying undiscovered at the bottom of the ocean. Maybe. We know one thing for sure, we have no clue what's going on over there. People have been trying to figure it out for years, but nothing. Zip, nada. So what was it that Christopher Columbus saw that fateful evening? What freaked him out so bad? According to his logs, Columbus saw a huge flash in the sky. I don't care how tough you are, if you're sailing around with no clue where you are, and then you see a massive flash right in front of you, <laughs> you'd find me hiding below deck, chewing on a lemon or something. That's not the only sea mystery out there, not by a long shot. Heard of the Kraken? A giant squid that can swallow a whole ship. No? <laughs> you're lucky. Imagine cruising on a ship, wind in your hair, hands on your hips, like, you know, those old pirate movies. Then a huge squid creeps up on you from deep down in the cold, dark water. It wraps its tentacles around the ship and drags the whole thing to the bottom of the ocean. Good thing you packed a life raft. How about a colossal sea serpent chasing your boat at full speed looking for a midday snack? That thing is called a leviathan, and you better hope it's not real. Or sirens, mean but beautiful creatures of the sea. They like to hang out on rocks and sing karaoke. Their magical voices attract sailors who sail their ships right into the sharp rocks. Now, mermaids, on the other hand, oh, totally awesome. They like karaoke too, but they're not into the whole ship smashing thing. Good old mermaids, <laughs> they're real, right? And let's not forget peg-legged pirates. Arr, lootin', raidin', sayin' arr every two seconds. Arr. What else do those guys do all day? So back to our Italian friend, Columbus. Maybe he just saw a thunderstorm. <laughs> Duh, why didn't he think of that? Well, I'm not 600 years old, and I wasn't there. How on earth would I know? Weird thing is, he never mentioned any huge waves or heavy rain. No strong winds either. Just a single flash in the sky. Maybe some dolphins were setting off fireworks or something. After the flash, Columbus wrote that his compass needle started dancing all over the place. This keeps getting weirder and weirder. His report ends with a friendly turtle with sunglasses jumping out of the water, pushing the three ships to shore, and everyone went out to get hot dogs. Only kidding. So what happened? Scientists now think they've got the answer. Drum roll. An asteroid crashed into the ocean. Case closed. But wait, what about that stuff with the compass? What does that have to do with an asteroid? Asteroids come in all different shapes and sizes, but they're like chocolate eggs, the best parts on the inside. They're packed full of minerals and metals worth trillions of dollars. Scientists are even trying to figure out how to land on a big one and mine it. It'd have to be a really big one. I'm talking about an asteroid the size of Rhode Island. Why? Because chances are it'd have a magnetic field around it making it way easier to land on. Scientists think that the magnetic fields around some asteroids can last for millions of years. Mystery solved. Maybe. Captain Christopher Columbus's compass went cuckoo crazy because of an asteroid crashing right in front of him. That actually might explain some other strange Bermuda tales. About a hundred years ago, the USS Cyclops left Barbados on its way to Baltimore 
and sailed right through the middle of the Bermuda Triangle. It never arrived. Search teams spent ages looking, but they couldn't find anything. It just vanished, just like that. In 1945, five military planes vanished without a trace. They flew right over the Bermuda Triangle. So if there is an asteroid sitting at the bottom of the sea somewhere, why is it still causing problems 500 years later? Radar and old-school compasses rely on the Earth's magnetic field. Radar is how they track flights all around the world. A faulty radar reading? That would be a problem. Try putting a magnet near a compass and see what happens. The compass needle is its own little magnet, always pointing north. But if you put it next to a strong enough magnet, the needle will spin around to face it. What if that compass is all you've got to guide you to shore? Chinese ship captains were the first to invent compasses. Before that, people used to sail along the shore or just to islands that they could see. Having compasses meant those early sailors could write down where they went so other people could get there too. So now that we have all this new tech, the question is, is that asteroid even still down there? How would we get down there to find out? It wouldn't be the first ever deep sea dive. We've already been down the Mariana Trench, the deepest one on Earth. The Mariana Trench makes climbing Mount Everest look like a joke. Only two people have ever been down there. Because it's so deep, the water pressure is insane. The only way down is in a high-tech tank, something that won't crush in on itself under pressure. And that kind of thing doesn't come cheap. Down there, just a lot of darkness, quiet and beauty, and a bunch of weird animals. The Bermuda Triangle isn't as deep as the Mariana Trench, so we might get down there one day. We might see that asteroid that Columbus saw, this time with millions of tiny fish on it who've made it their home. All those lost ships and planes that disappeared should be down there somewhere. Or we might see something we were never expecting. We might find ancient species of squid, sharks, and turtles with special skills like night vision. We might find gold. Loads of ships full of gold and silver sank on their way back to Europe from the Americas. Some wrecks had evidence of fire. Some were split in two. Most of them are still out there. Japanese divers once found an ancient underwater pyramid-looking thing. They don't even know for sure if it was natural or man-made. Up in the Baltic Sea, someone snapped a bizarre sonar image of a spaceship? Or just a strange-looking rock? A Swiss lake was hiding a sweet vintage car. After it was dragged to shore and cleaned, it was sold for over $350,000. And the tires still had air in them. Japanese fishermen once found a small round boat that had a glass top on it. There was a red-haired woman inside. Some thought it was a fairy tale come true. Some thought she was a magical creature. And some thought she was a spy. The Bermuda Triangle sounds scary, but the islands near it are awesome. Bermuda is a tiny island where they speak English, and the other points of the triangle are the tip of Florida and the American island of Puerto Rico.